I've owned lots of EDC cameras in the past already. I started out with the Fuji H100V, then I switched out to the Lumix LX3 because I thought that the Fuji H100V was too expensive, and then I switched to what I have right now. I truly believe that this is the best full frame everyday camera setup that you can have. So this is the Sony a7C2 and the Samyang 35mm f2.8. And as you can see, the setup is really tiny. It's not Fuji X100V small, but it gets pretty close, especially if you consider that the Fuji X100V is an APS-C camera and this is a full frame camera. They're not that much different in terms of weight and size, especially if you consider that you can turn this A7C2 into a workhorse camera or you could just keep it tiny and compact like this. You obviously also have other cameras such as the Leica Q2 or the Leica Q3, but those are like double or triple the price. And I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't that excited about this shoot when I saw the photos afterwards because I felt like it wasn't the best shoot that I ever did, but that's a valuable lesson for both you and me because not every photo shoot can be all about bangers. And I also tried to switch up environments a bit because I was kind of growing tired of doing street photography and both my city, which is Antwerp, and I always was more drawn to nature, to traveling and all that kind of stuff, but I never put the effort into finding actually good locations to go visit and to take some photos. And I also think that my eye just needs to get trained a bit on a different kind of subject matter. So me and my homie Kane went to the local polders over here and the weather wasn't the best. It was pretty moody, like gray skies and obviously it's still winter. So the trees had like no leaves onto them. And I think that these places would look really beautiful in summer. So I'm first going to show you the shoot itself with the A7C2 and the Samyang. And afterwards we're going to talk about the Samyang and the Sony A7C2 itself and we'll also be discussing some other lenses that you could buy instead of the Samyang while keeping your kit very small. Uh bruh, we should have brought our boots. <laughs> so that's our destination and we gotta go through all this mud and we aren't prepared obviously. Go on the other side. Okay the other side. The fucked up side. Okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> We're gonna do a split, bro. Okay. Hell yeah. Let's go outside there, sir. Yeah. The birds are even laughing at us. Bro, look at this path. And look at our shoes. The H1 is in our new ones back is on me. Alright, almost finally arrived at our destination. Looks pretty cool. I think this is a pretty cool spot for when it's summer. Ah, fuck me, man. Shit. Well, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty nice spot, not gonna lie. Other than the fact that our shoes got destroyed. I obviously wasn't that happy when we arrived to this final spot because the background is way too busy. There were like no leaves on the trees. Everything was just pretty ugly in my opinion. But on the way back, I came across this pretty nice composition. I really like the colors and the simplicity of this shot. We also saw some deers, but unfortunately I didn't have my camera out of my camera bag at that moment. 
So after that, we went to another location. And as you can see, it's another pretty bare landscape, so don't expect too crazy photos. But don't worry too much about that because after this shoot, I'm also going to show you some street photos that I took on the Sony A7C2 and the 735 mm f2.8. This place isn't the most beautiful looking at the moment, but... We're just taking some photos of my homie right here because I thought that this path looked pretty cool because it's actually a leading line and then behind him we have these cool dark clouds popping up behind of him and then we also have the contrasting colors of his sweater which look pretty cool Yeah, these will look pretty cool. Now these are quite nice. So this lens is obviously not the best in terms of giving you insanely good image quality. It doesn't have the best minimum focusing distance, it's not the best in harsh lighting, and apparently the autofocus isn't that good either, but you could do a software update when you buy like this attachment thingy for this lens, which I think is ridiculous because why can't you just update this lens through an SD card? But anyway, I didn't encounter any issues with the autofocus, but that's probably because the Sony a7C2 has this crazy AI chip which aids the autofocus. But anyway, what can you expect from a lens that costs $250, right? For me personally, this lens serves a clear purpose. Whenever I'd go somewhere without having any goal in mind that I want to shoot, or I just like be on vacation and I just go to a restaurant with my fiance and I don't want to bring my entire kid or we just go to the movies or I'd go to like a family party or these kind of things. In those kind of circumstances, I would bring this lens with the a7C2 with me. But like I told you, I also feel like the photos that I shot on this shoot weren't the best. So I'm also going to show you a couple of photos that I shot on this lens during the street photography session I had a couple of weeks ago. If you want to achieve similar color grades for your photos or videos, you can get my LUTs or DaVinci Resolve power grades in the link in the description below. And by the way, if you're interested in seeing the full street photography shoot shot with this lens, you can check it out. If you don't like the 35mm focal length that much, or if you want to get a 35mm, which is optically better and almost the same size, you could go for the size 35mm. And this one costs $600, so more than double the price. And I'm not really sure if it's actually worth the price. Because I had the size at first, but then I returned it because I found out about these Samyang lenses. And for that price, even less, I could buy the 35mm and the 24 mm And for that price, I could buy the 35 mm and the 24 mm 
f2.8. So if you don't enjoy shooting on a 35mm, you could also get the 24mm from Samyang. They're almost the same size and weight, and they even cost the same. You could also get one of Sony's G prime lenses, such as the 24, the 40, or the 50mm f2.5. And I personally haven't tested these yet, but I do know that they're quite expensive. So a couple of months ago I was still shooting on the Lumix S5 Mark II and even though I really enjoyed the camera, I enjoyed the image that I could get out of it, the image stabilization was really insane, the autofocus was lacking a bit sometimes and I was growing tired of having such a heavy and big body. So I was doing some research to see what Sony came up with and then I discovered the Sony a7C II. In the past I had the Sony a7C but I wasn't really that happy with it so I sold it again but this tiny powerhouse right here is just absolutely insane. It's really crazy how Sony put all these insane specs into these tiny bodies these days and that's really promising for the future. By the way you can check out my full video on why I switched from the Lumix S5 Mark II to the Sony a7C II over here. The amazing autofocus on the Sony a7C II due to the AI chip as well, are just what makes these tiny lenses shine. I'm not really sure if these tiny lenses would perform as well without this insane autofocus, to be honest. Most of the times I'll probably still be using my Sony 24 to 70 mm G Master Mark II, which I have on the camera right now because it's just a workhorse and it can just basically do everything. I also have a Tamron 70 to 180 mm G2 lens, which is also really insane and really compact for what it can do. These are basically all the lenses that I have. I also have a couple of vintage lenses. And by the way, I also added the thumb grip to add some more comfort to the camera. And I also added a bottom plate, which first of all, looks really cool. Second, it adds some extra comfort to the camera. And third, it also acts as a tripod plate so that's really a three in one and it does add a bit of size but it doesn't add that much weight to be honest. If you want to buy any of these lenses or accessories for your Sony a7C2 you can find them down in the link in the description below in the my kit link. Anyway thank you so much for watching this video let me know in the comments down below if you're getting any of these lenses. If you enjoyed this video you'll probably enjoy one of these two as well. Come out. Peace.